So if you had come to me a year ago and said, Mike, what is the last thing that you expected to see in the next year? I would have said another Corsair air cooler. But guess what? Corsair, they are coming out with the A115, another air cooler. And honestly, the reason why I'm shocked is because the last time they tried their hand at air cooling, it ended up being an utter and complete disaster. Its performance was absolutely atrocious and I even tried everything I could possibly think of to fix it. And I mean everything. And that included lapping the base. It was just beyond help. So yeah, on the last outing, Corsair did everything wrong and set an obviously very low bar for anything else that they released in the air cooling space. But look, the A115 takes that formula and completely throws it out the window and starts over from the ground up. Instead of a heatsink design that feels like it was from another era, this one has a dual tower layout with a dense fin array and small returns that are supposed to help channel the air rather than allowing it to escape out the sides. Instead of four heat pipes running into an HDT base with finishing that would make an air cooler bought off Temu embarrassed, there's six highly binned six millimeter heat pipes that terminate in a well-finished solid nickel plated copper base that's slightly concave. Instead of two anemic 120 millimeter fans from the last cooler, we've got a pair of AF140 Elites. Now these are two of Corsair's highest end fans that they have right now. Of course that adds to the A115's overall height, especially if you use higher memory modules. But the fans are installed on a brilliant rail system. Need them to move upwards? Just push up or down, simple as that. Instead of that odd layout that caused installation issues for the A500 on some motherboards, this cooler should be worry-free, at least as far as we tested it on a full dozen Intel and AMD boards. Instead of a frustrating mounting system that caused some conflicts on certain motherboards, the A115's is straightforward, easy to understand, and doesn't require any visual guesswork when tightening down the retention screws. Instead of trying to get an overly clean look by just adding some ugly plastic bits, Corsair just embraced the air cooling look, but they coated the entire thing in actually what I'd call one of the best matte black finishes I've ever seen. It just eats the light and somehow doesn't show any fingerprints whatsoever. And you know what else doesn't show any fingerprints? This case from Fractal. Earth, she is beautiful. I have my favorite spots in nature to observe and visit, and I'm sure you do too. And I feel we all need a little beauty in our daily computer life, something that reminds you a case can be special too. Feeling proud of your process to get there, partially to showcase your lifestyle with this one component that is surprisingly organic, both in design and hardware fitment. It's not just a case, it's a Terra, available only on our beautiful Earth. So at first glance, the A115 looks like everything the A500 wasn't. It looks like a amazing air cooler. Now, the only thing that is probably going to hold you back is its price. And that has actually been revised downwards twice already by Corsair before this video even goes live. First, they said it was gonna go for $125 US. Yup, that's right, 125 bucks. Then we were told it's gonna be $115 and now, Finally, it's a hundred bucks, which is still a lot given what else is out there, especially from the likes of Thermalright, ID Cooling, and Deepcool. But it could have been a lot worse. I'm looking at you, be quiet. And even with that price, I feel like there's a couple of small things that are still missing with this cooler. The first thing is a tube of thermal compound. Yes, Corsair does pre-install thermal compound on the A115's base, but what happens if you needed to remount it for whatever reason? Well, you're SOL because they didn't even include a tiny one gram tube. You're gonna have to go out and buy another tube of thermal compound. And the final thing is, and yes, I am a little bit old school with this, but I would really appreciate a physical instruction manual. It is just so much easier to go back and forth when you're installing a cooler or any component for that matter, rather than going to your phone, scanning a QR code and hoping that link that's linked to the QR code actually opens. Also, yes, those sliding fan brackets are freaking brilliant, but I'd like to see their detent spacing decreased just a bit. Right now, every stopping point is at increments of about 3 8 inch or 10 millimeters, so there's no fine tuning for memory clearance. Every single time we 
mounted it, the fan was either overly high or too low. Anyways, the bigger question here is how does the A115 perform? Because based on its price, it sets some very lofty expectations. But on the positive side, what I can say is that its fans are some of the quietest that we've experienced in the last year of testing. Let's have a listen. Well, that definitely sets the stage for our performance testing. But look, quiet fans do not necessarily lead to a good cooler. So let's start out with the Intel testing and go from there. At the lowest thermal output, so something that approximates a 13600K, the A115 is unbelievably good. At lower noise levels, it's simply the best air cooler we've ever tested. Full stop. Essentially, at the 36 and 37 decibel points, it can deliver class leading performance. And that's so important for people who care about how loud their system gets for optimal temperatures. If we break this down against every other heatsink we've tested at a constant 38 decibels, it becomes even more apparent Corsair absolutely nailed it. And moving up to 253 watts shows that this isn't a one hit wonder either. At every single decibel point, it's either tied with or beats some legendary air coolers like the Frost Spirit, D15, and Phantom Spirit. But for a massive cooler like this one, the most important thing is low noise performance. And at 36 and 37 decibels, where its raw thermal mass can be put to good use. And again, it's at those lower noise levels where the A115 can pull further ahead of smaller heats like the Frost Spirit, Peerless Assassin, and Dark Rock Elite. You can really see this test separates the men from the boys with a pretty significant gap between the best of the best coolers and all the rest when we normalize down to 38 decibels. But nothing, and I mean nothing, can stop an air cooler from hitting Intel's thermal ceiling when operating without any limits whatsoever. So the only way we can really see any differentiation between the coolers is by drilling down into clock speeds. And here the A115 is again one of the absolute best around. As a matter of of fact, at 43 decibels, it's able to hit 5.4 gigahertz, which is the highest we've seen so far. Even gaming sees Corsair's latest cooler becoming the best performer we've seen at a few noise levels. But once again, it's particularly strong under the 40 decibel mark, at least on the Intel platform. This is actually an important win for Corsair since there's been a ton of supposedly high-end air coolers that end up struggling here since they can't handle higher ambient temperatures very well. The Assassin 4 is a perfect example of that. Now, if this review stopped right here and right now, it's pretty obvious that Corsair's A115 would probably get our seal of approval. Boom, this is a damn good product. It basically mops the floor with coolers like the Assassin 4 and Dark Rock Elite while costing a bit less. Yes, I understand that the thermal right coolers are out there and from a price to performance ratio, those still win out. But at least at low noise levels, the A115 is, is really, really on another level. The problem is we don't stop here. At least that's a problem for Corsair. What we do now is we get on to AMD testing. And if anything has shown us what separates the men from the boys, when it comes to a great all-around air cooler, it is the AM5 platform. And at least on the Ryzen 7 7600X, it becomes pretty obvious that Corsair's focus was optimizing on Intel's latest platform. The best thing I can say about this is that it beats Be Quiet's utterly disappointing Dark Rock Elite. But this isn't a result I expected, especially after seeing what this thing did on the 13900K. I mean, look, overall, this is a solid middle of the pack result when lined up against all the other coolers. But you aren't paying a hundred bucks for mediocrity, are you? And if you thought upping the tempo with a hotter running CPU would do anything, sadly, the A115 starts looking even worse than before. Actually, this flat lining of overall high temperatures alongside the amazing Intel results point towards there being a bottleneck between the CPU and the base. Heat just isn't being effectively transferred between the two so it can go up through the heat pipes and be dissipated through the fin stack. 
Th this isn't the first time we've seen something like this either. Typically coolers that do super well on Intel tend to struggle on AMD. The only exceptions are Thermalrite and Deepcool these days. They've just found some sort of special secret sauce that works across every single platform. With Corsair, it just gets all that much worse as temperatures rise with the A115 hitting the 7950X's maximum T-junction at every decibel level. I mean, sure, in terms of clock speeds, its raw thermal mass helps below 38 decibels, but after that point, it just ends up fighting a losing battle against a bunch of heat sinks that cost a fraction of the price. Temperatures in gaming really don't improve my perspective of the A115 either, because it's posting some of the worst results we've seen from a cooler that costs this much. I was actually thinking its size would have at least some effect here, but in the end, even smaller coolers like the Phantom Spirit, Peerless Assassin, and even AK620 were far better. It's pretty obvious that regardless of how you look at things, these results on the AM5 platform are a massive disappointment for anybody hoping that this would be another great all-around air cooler that did amazing things on every single platform. But I'm going to give credit where credit is due because the A115 is vindication for Corsair after what happened with the A500. They could have just said, look, forget about it. we're never launching another high-end air cooler again. That is basically pushed to the side. We're only going to be focusing on AIOs and overpriced fans for the foreseeable future. But they didn't. They made this and it is a huge step forward. It is almost your perfect air cooler, provided you're on the Intel platform because I, I'm gonna really level with everybody right now. This is sort of becoming a trend. In the last couple of months, we've tested three brand new air coolers, including this one that did so well on Intel, but just they, they, they fell apart on AM5. And to me, that is really taking a massive chunk of the market now and in the future and saying, look, if you want great performance for the price on your chosen platform, you have to look somewhere else. And to me, that's, that's just not acceptable because it's not like some other companies like Noctua aren't making an effort to see how AM5 reacts to coolers and making actual changes to their mounting kits in order to satisfy AM5 users. And yes, I reached out to Corsair. I showed them point blank every single one of our numbers for this cooler on AM5. And what did they say? They said, well, that's pretty much to be expected. And to me, that's just not an acceptable answer. So in the end, what Corsair has done is create a very one dimensional cooler. If you're on an Intel platform, by all means, this gets my stamp of approval. What it can do, especially at lower noise levels, is absolutely incredible. On the other hand, if you're running an AMD system, especially AM5, I would recommend you just look elsewhere. Look at something from Thermalrite, look at something from Deepcool, maybe not their Assassin 4, but anything else. The price to performance ratio on those coolers is gonna blow this thing straight out of the water. And that is a little bit disappointing for Corsair because they almost hit this one out of the park. But anyways, I'm Mike with Haru Canucks. I hope that you enjoyed this content and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Have a great day.